Does Angel Typo win in standard? Is it fun to say typo? No questions. Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. There it is. Don't know why that took a minute. You feeling okay, arena? Anyway, uh, it's me. It's CGB. Today we're playing angels in MTG Arena. We're playing the best angels in a five color deck. That's actually a Boros deck, but is a five color deck because we put in one Atroxa Grand Unifier, which we can cast using the combination of Plaza of Heroes, Secluded Courtyard, Cavern of Souls uh, for the mana. It really is just to have the five colors in the thumbnail because I am a content creator and this is how I roll. You can uh, definitely cut the Atraxa if it scares you. So our curve is a little scary, but because we shifted into Boros, we can run Lightning Helix and a number of other two mana spells to keep ourselves alive while our angels get down on the battlefield and take over the game. There's a ton of life gain from Steel Seraph, Aurelia's Vindicator, and Archangel of Wrath, so I'm optimistic that we can activate response Splendid Angel and stabilize against those pesky mono red aggro decks. Now we do not go wide enough to just simply contain the Boros deck and we don't run sweepers. So what we have to do is make sure that we're gaining life consistently and often and putting Boros on a clock. It is a challenge. I won't say it's easy, but it is something that can be done with the right amount of pressure. Giada Font of Hope is a card they don't often kill because the Boros deck is all about getting on the board, and this card absolutely snowballs. You'll be amazed at how hard it is to handle. So I'm super excited to play this deck. In a nutshell, the new angels are Aurelia's Vindicator, which is another sneaky way to do removal in the deck. You can cloak it for three mana and then flip the disguise and pay the to exile some permanents, but I end up casting this on the front side rather often because just the pace of the card is so strong. The ward two and the life link means it's a very hard card to race, so when the opponent is playing things fast and furiously, I don't have time to cloak it. Aurelia the Law Above is a great way to really pile on the pressure as opponents struggle to comprehend hasty angels. I think a lot of the times they do their combat math and work out that they're going to win before you get your big swing, and then Aurelia just throws that off. Off, along with some burn to face, which is why we have two lightning strikes and four lightning helix. It's a deceptively powerful, aggressive deck that I think will fit well in the meta. Thank you to my sponsors, CoolStuffInc.com. Use the promo code CGB5 at checkout and you will get a discount. And Ultimate Guard, thank you very much for providing the protective products to guard my collection. Now let's dive in. Let the nonsense begin. Um and on. Uh, okay, on the play, hit you with the invasion, draw the land, 100%, never didn't have it, play the Seraph, we roll. They want to say hi to me. Here. How about this? Fight me. By the way, I'm using that as a placeholder for your go for you sensitive little Andes and Andreas. You think that your go is an affront. So hopeful. Ooh, we hide that. We invade Gobacon. Adeline, resolute reinforcements. Ha, no, no turn two play for you. They won't top deck one either. They will not top deck one. Humans versus angels. A war dating back generations. So, is it Seraph or is it Resplendo? Seraph can have Vigilance. Seraph can also give Vigilance. Let's begin. There's your Adeline. You wanna you wanna throw away your hopeful? Not yet. Needed a land. Didn't get one. But we go to work. We go Vigilant. Poke Invasion. Let the counters begin. Come at me! They're probably going to cast their Knight. Everybody loves their Knight Errants of Eos. And that goes well with the Knight. Huh? Are you sure? 
They have a Ganjo, so that's why. If they use a Ganjo, though, they don't get to convoke this. And we get to kill the Adeline. So go ahead, do it. Oh, opponent. Oops. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, uh, that's an angel. That's an angel. That's a lifelink. That's a lifelink. That's a 4 4. That's game. We didn't even unleash our full power. On the play, no two drop. I think we keep anyway on the play. We don't have to aggressively mulligan for the two on the play. Cavern of Souls off the top, please. Oh, okay. Not that kind of deck. Well, there's something new. We'll go for the 3-3 three, three flyer. Okay, they're definitely getting their scry on. If they pass, they've got like make disappear or something. There we go. Now we're cooking. Joel, what's up? Ah, yeah. Yeah, make disappear. Yeah. Yeah, show me how cool you are. There's the case. They do need another artifact to solve it. They go for Glyph. Oh, trust me. You're not going to race me. Trust me. Let's go kick it. This will trigger the Resplendent Angel when we hit with the Vindicator. We gain six life. Keep coming. You're the dark angel. I'm the light angel or something, I guess. No blocks. Easy. <laughs> Easy peasy. Covert Go Blue has mastered the skies, so now he's ready to become the true apex predator by taming a T-Rex. Check out the Covert Go Blue Dinosaur Rider playmat, featuring CGB astride the king of the dinosaurs. Each playmat comes with a free Dinosaur Rider token, so get your hands on this prehistoric prize and pick up Covert Go Blue's Dinosaur Rider playmat today at CoolStuffInc.com slash CGB. CoolStuffInc.com. Cool stuff in stock. Risky helix without a way to cast it, but we will try. We might not get a lot of time. Okay, two sundown pass means we can cast helix on three. We can cast get lost on two. Draw red or white here, and we can Helix now. The opponent discarded a Squee. I wonder what they're digging for. What do they need? Hmm. Is Get Lost the play? Or am I supposed to play a Skrelv and have a Steel Seraph next turn? And then a, a Vindicator the turn after that? Or do I have to break Serve? Do I have to use a Get Lost here? I feel like I have to be mana efficient. But, they do have to kill the Skrell. If they don't, they can't remove the Seraph or the Vindicator. Those might stabilize us. Alright, please stay mana screwed. Thank you. That's an angel. Behold the technology! I haven't done this in a minute. Vigilance. Suck it. 
That'll teach him. Seems like rage, but we will find out. Okay, down to seven. My turn. Interesting. We'll go with lifelink. Feels like they have a lightning strike, doesn't it? That's why we do it. Name Angel. Cast Vindicator. For life, please. Okay, Skrull has to die. Please stay mana screwed. Thank you. Life link, we can't beat that. Impossible. On the play with Giada Keep. I know, complicated analysis. Angel coming through. Boros. Great. Giada. When is the right time for a helix? Well, not now. <laughs> not right now. All right, Seraph. Gonna need to draw a few less lands if we're gonna close this thing. You get lifelink. Oh, I'm sorry, opponent. Was my start of two drop into three drop too overwhelmingly fast and powerful for you? I'm so sorry. On the play. Oh my gosh, the hands be rolling now. More Boros, huh? Or just mono red. Whatever. Let's see if they can deal with Giada on time. Uh huh. Yep. Dang it. Needed to dodge that. Oh, hi. Actually, I have to do this, don't I? Because we might not be able to play it next turn if the Giata dies. What incredible magical prowess from our opponent. Uh, make him have it, I guess. Make him finish the job here. Archangel of Wrath can stabilize a lot, but we really do need to be able to kick it. Untapped land, untapped land, untapped land, untapped land. Ah, oh, that'll do. Kick it once. Die. Four or five life link or what? I am a witch stalker's frenzy away from a full meltdown, but we try. Charm scoundrel digging for it. Can they hit off the top right here, right now? Ah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, it's good. Life is good. It's beautiful. Die. Yes. 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 Get mono red. Yes. On the play. Three drops in Helix. Let's rumble. Uh-huh. Boros. Uh-huh. Hmm. Let's see what they do. Inspecta. See, that's then tap three for a scry. Bang, bang. Yes. 
Be nice. Hmm. Let's get an angel down. Get things cooking here. This could already be a 3-4, though, by the time I untap, which is why we had to think about that a little bit. But I think that's okay. We might need the Helix to get the trigger. Like, if we get to 5 mana with a Steel Seraph and 2 Resplendent Angels on the field, then Seraph, Lifelink, Attack, and Helix could get us 2 more Angels. Cringe. At least the case hasn't been solved yet. Okay, maybe next turn. I don't know if we have the right mana, though. The plaza and the murex are going to mess this up. Oh, its brain hurts from having to figure out what to do. No kidding. I found a good line. How about that? Well, here's a block. We go to five. They solve the case. If they have another recruiter, like, their victory is so easy, I can't imagine what they tanked for. Ugh, oh, it's so close to the play that we tried to draw up, but it's not, is it? So do I have to Helix here? I don't think that'll work. Yep, uncastable. Cringe. Ah, oh, this is terrible. This is so terrible. I think we have to go for a lifelink hit. I don't want to double chump. But if they just play a recruiter, I lose, so... Let's do it. Already? Right. Could take seven. What would they do to deal me one more damage? An Epicur? Do we just have to hope they don't have an Epicur? If I lose the Seraph, we just have a worse turn next turn, so I have to try. Okay. Down to one. Land. I'm not good enough, right? But we have this. White, white, one. Wait a minute. We can do it. Just have to sequence. Like this. We have to gain the life to get off of one life. And then we can use the Battlefield Forge to cast the Lightning Helix. And it comes together! Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Get me out of this. Yep. Not a big problem. What else you got? They shouldn't attack with this. If they do, they don't get to trade it with the Resplendent Angel, which is the real problem. Because the Resplendent Angel will just hit them for more lifelink damage and make more creatures every turn. And they figured that out. Smarty Pants. So if they block here, do they die? No. So they might just block and kill the Steel Seraph. But if they do that, they take seven and we make another one, or they chump with the bat. Yeah, they have to trade with this, right? 
Uh, we'll, we'll offer them the, the Vigilant because if they block and kill this, we just get another one. They have to trade here. And they did figure that out based on last turn. So we go up to 15. We still have two flyers, one of them a Vigilant Lifelinker. Could be good enough. They continue to go hella wide. And they have these bats. Giada. Play the Giada. Now, if we attack with this and they double block with bats, are we in big trouble? Maybe? What if they kill the Seraph? They are at six. 14. It's close. They attack with these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Let's try to finish it. Okay, they gang up on the Seraph. We accept. They go to two. Here's Giada. Will Plaza earn its keep here by protecting our angel? They dig. They have to dig. You fail. Yes, you. You fail. Trying to fool me with your Jace avatar and Jace leaves. Pathetic. I don't care anymore. I'm just hitting keep. <laughs> it's my new lifestyle. After you keep enough two landers and never draw the third land or enough three landers where you never draw the fourth, eventually it just doesn't matter anymore. Hopefully we get to use the Vindicator though. I mean, if you draw a lot of lands, the Vindicator can be really good. It's just that not many best of one games go past turn five, really. The control games are usually over at that point. You just don't know it yet. Oh, yeah, our opponent's here. Maybe. A lot of contemplation to play a turn one red creature. We'll see if Get Lost comes in handy. It's not what you want to draw against Mono Red. I almost took all of these out for lightning strikes. Just because the meta seems to have... This card seems to be pretty bad right now. Anytime. Anytime. Angels, let's go. Ah. Nice. They worship at the foot of Swift Spear. Of course they'll keep it. Ten minutes later. You don't kill the Resplendent Angel, dude. You kill the thing that was going to gain the life. But whatever. Can't stop him. Mono Red's going to Mono Red.
10 minutes later. Riveting gameplay. Huh. Well, if only I had one more mana. I think I just have to play this face up, though. If they have another play with fire, which they definitely should have used on the Vindicator last turn, then we lose? No, they still need another mana. Nice trick. Got anything else up your sleeve or? <laughs> Get on a red. <laughs> now they kill the angel. Okay. I was really looking forward to this Atraxa. Maybe I still can. Need one Cavern of Souls type land. Do it. They're not doing it. Okay. Call your silly, silly, silly bluff. See if they have another. What incredible talent. Da! This is where they draw play with fire, right? Right? 100 million percent? No! Fucking hate this game. Today's random YouTube member shout out goes to Cliff G. Cliff G, thank you for becoming a member of the Cool Kids Club. I hope that you're enjoying early access to all of my videos and your random shout out. You too can become one at $4.99 a month by hitting the join button below. Please do it. I will continue to try to make sweet extra perks for the members. And what are we doing here with Angels? I went a grand whopping and impressive 9 and 11 playing this deck on ladder. But that's not the whole story if you were just kind of nosing around in my untapped.gg profile. I actually went 4 and 2 after the last batch of changes to the deck that moved it into a more Boros direction and out of the 5 color Angel direction, which was ambitious, but something I was trying earlier. Lightning Helix in particular is an important addition to the deck. It provides for big swings, and I think also having Lightning Strike to get over the finish line and surprise people with our Bernie nature is a very good move as well. So the deck could certainly use more testing. I think that it does a good job of keeping the meta kind of in check. They gotta keep their eye on the sky, right? So I'm optimistic that this could actually be a very powerful best of one deck with more testing and work, and I would love to hear your results if you try it out on ladder. So thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next one. Remember to like and subscribe. You're cool.